just smile. We are live. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. Um, we are going to have a virtual painting lesson with local artist Justin Hoyle. Justin, thank you so much for being here. Of course, thank you for having me. Uh, before we jump in, brushes first. Um, I thought we could learn a little bit about you and your art. So tell sure. me, um, yeah, how did you start painting? Uh, what drew, drew you to this medium? Um, well, I mean, I always grew up painting. I was a typical art kid, painted in school. Um, so I always had access to it. My mom painted a lot when I was younger. Um, and, you know, I did acrylic painting and stuff back then. But tried the oil painting a couple years back and got hooked on it. And uh, I've just been running with it ever since. So you, you would say oil is your favorite medium then, your official paint medium? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's just, it's so fun. It's fast. It's easy. It's really forgiving. Um, just about anybody can pick it up and do it. It's pretty awesome. We like that. We like that a lot. So um, can you tell us a little bit about the Bob Ross Institute and your time studying there? Sure. Uh, so uh, I'm a Bob Ross certified oil painting instructor. Uh, so there is a workshop in New Smyrna Beach, Florida that you can go to. It's a three week painting class. Uh, it's really just a crash course through the whole Bob Ross wet on wet technique. Um, it's open to anybody, no painting experience is needed. You can just you know sign up for a class and you know, you'll get the tools to, to learn how to create beautiful paintings and, and pass that knowledge on to you know, everyone you meet. So it's, it's a lot of fun. That sounds lots of fun. Um, about how long did it take you to get your certification? It's three weeks. Three weeks yeah, it's, it's three, three full weeks down there. Um, so, yeah. Great. So uh, looking at your art, I sort of see that landscapes and the natural world um, sort of take up the majority of your work. So what is it about nature or the outdoors that inspires you? I just typically love being outside in the summer, uh, the warm air, the breeze, just cutting through the trees. There's, you know, that's my happy place, just outside. I think it's a place that you can kind of escape to your daily life. You can get away from the nine to five, you know, the, the pressures of, of your life. You just just go out and take a deep breath and, and just, just feel some of that beautiful nature. Absolutely. Absolutely. We agree. So do you visit a Pennsylvania State Parks and Forests? I do. Yeah, I do. I'm an avid camper. My wife and I, we go out there with our dog. Um, Cowan's Gap, Cadora State Park, and just a few of our favorites. Go out there and spend some long weekends. It's a lot of fun. That's great. That's great to hear, Justin. Okay, well, enough babble. Let's get into the painting, huh? So I'm going to... Um, yeah. Let's show the folks what we'll be um, painting today, what we'll be creating. So here is a photographic image um, of what we'll be turning into a work of art. Can you tell us a little bit about this photo, Justin? Yeah, uh, this is a picture I took at Cowan's Gap, um, right there on the lake. It's just a neat little picture I thought we could you know, rip out pretty quick and just show you how easy it is to turn these beautiful pictures into great works of art. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, if folks sure. have questions at any time during the lesson, feel free to comment them below. I'll be monitoring that and, and we can ask Justin sort of as he creates. So take it right. away. All right, so I'll just go ahead and get started. I'll tell you a little bit, uh, excuse me, a little bit about what's going on up here. This is just a standard old canvas. This is a 16 by 20 inch double primed pre-stretched canvas. I've put some tape on the edges. It gives it a nice little border. It gives it a, you know, a clean little frame. And to that, I've put a very thin coat of liquid white. It's just an oil paint medium. It's a really thin liquid paint. It allows us to blend color on the canvas instead of working ourselves to death here, mixing colors. So, we're just gonna use a few brushes, a few colors. And we're gonna to throw together a beautiful painting. Today, I'm gonna to use Thalo Blue, Midnight Black, Van Dyke Brown, Alizarin Crimson, Sap Green, Cadmium Yellow, 
yellow ochre and Indian yellow and just a little bit of this white paint here. So we'll go ahead and jump right in with our teeny little two inch brush here. I'm just gonna go right into a little blue. I'm just gonna tap it right into the bristles. I'm not looking for a lot of paint, just a little right on the edge of the brush. And I'm just tapping it to fully load it into the bristles. And so from here, you just start off in this corner. So little circles, little X's. We're gonna work across and down. And as we're working down, the paint on our brush is mixing with the liquid white that's already on here. And the value is going to get lighter and lighter towards the horizon just automatically. We're really not going to have to do much work. It's just going to happen for us. So since we've got that going here, I figure we'll just put a little bit of water in. And to do that, really, we just take a little blue, a little more blue, and to that we'll add a little bit of Midnight Black, just to darken it down. And I'm going to add a little bit of Sap Green. Because this is a lake, so it's going to kind of be a little green. So to do these water here, I'm just going to lay the brush flat. I'm just going to pull it forward. And flick. I'm just trying to keep these strokes pretty level. Straight across, and then we'll keep going from the other side too. Just a little bit of blue right from the other side. So we can darken it up a hair. And from there, I think we're about ready to blend the sky. To do that, I'm just going to grab a clean one inch brush. And I'll start here, up in the top corners. I'm just going to spin little circles, just around, little X's, just working my way down, just lighter and lighter and lighter towards the horizon here. And then I'll go across all the way, really lightly, just to bring everything together, and that'll take out the brush strokes. And I'll just blend out the water down here too. The same thing. I'm just gonna go straight across just to smooth it out. So we've got a pretty nice looking sky. We really didn't do much to it, but you can see there's quite a bit of variations in the color there. And those will end up looking like clouds and, and distant little things happening in the sky. And our water, you can see there's a little sheen left here. That just looks kind of like a reflection of light across the water. So we're all set there. We've got a nice sky. We've got some water. So what we're going to do next is we're just going to throw in these background trees. And I want them to look like they're farther back in the painting. So we're just going to mix up a quick color to do that. And I'll show you how easy that is. Just to mix a quick color, we're going to grab a little bit of the Midnight Black, a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown. We'll grab a little bit of our Alizarin Crimson and some of our Sap Green. So these are all our dark colors, and I'm just going to mix these pretty well. I'm just going to pick it up off the canvas off the palette here, flip it over, just to make sure I know it's good and mixed. Once we get that mixed, we'll just wipe off the knife here. And I'm gonna grab an oval brush. This brush is rounded on the top, so it makes the little tree shapes for you. You really don't have to do much work. So, the first thing I'll do with this brush is I'll go into a little bit of this white. And this is going to help 
bring this color to a, about a usable background color. So just white and that darker color that I've mixed. It should look kind of gray. You can add a little green to it if you like. Just a grayish, light greenish color, something like that. And all I'm doing is just loading the brush full and I'm just tapping it right into it. Just load the brush full and just tap it. And what happens when you tap it is this little ridge forms. And that's what you're going to paint with. So we'll come right up in here in this area. So I'm looking just a little past the halfway mark here. All I'm going to do is just tap. Just little taps. I'm just going to keep working my way down. I'll go back and I'll reload a little bit here. Just change the flavor a little, just add a little more green to it. And I'll come in from this side too. Same thing, just little taps. Nice and easy. Just filling this in. All I'm looking to do is really just fill in this background line. along the bottom give it a little bit of body underneath it so once that's sitting up there we just have to blend the bottom out of this a little bit and to do that I'm just gonna grab a clean one inch brush and I'm gonna tap this pretty hard like this I'm just tapping right into the bottom now I'm staying away from the very top edge I'm just tapping right through the bottom and right through the middle of this All I'm doing is just diffusing the bottom and I'm making room for the next layer of paint we're going to add. So we just go right through these. It should have a really soft light color and that'll be our background trees. So that wasn't too hard. So let's keep it going a little bit. I'm just going to go back in on the same brush here. This is the oval brush. Just grab a little bit of our dark color, add a little blue to it, add a little green, and then add just a little white. Yeah, that's a pretty color. Just tap it right in, that's it. Just little taps, little tippy taps. Super easy, there's nothing to it. So I'm gonna start bringing these trees forward. I've got my distant trees in the background, and I'm just going to start picking out a few things on this left side. And all I have to do is just tap these in like this. Just tap in a couple dark spots. Just a basic tree shapes. You know, we're not looking for too much detail now. Just, just basic tree shapes. Because this is pretty far away. We're not looking for a great bit of detail. That'll ruin the illusion we're going for. So I'll just keep these little tree shapes going. Just tapping them in. I'm just turning the brush a little bit. Tapping in little tree shapes. Same thing. Just reload the brush. Gonna darken this in down here. All right, same little, little blending step here. I've got my clean one inch brush, and just like I did before, I'm just gonna tap these on just the bottoms, and this is gonna help blend out the bottom of this here. Just looking for some mist underneath the trees. I'll start bringing this down in here. So that looks pretty good there. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start picking out my individual trees. And to do that, we're going to use the same brush, but we're just going to change the color on it. We're just going to add a little bit of the yellows to it. And what that's going to do is help bring us individual trees. We're going to start seeing little things happening. And it's just going to happen so fast. And, and I just know this, these techniques are just going to work for you. So. 
we're going to take a palette knife first. And I'm just going to scratch in a few little sticks. These are going to look like distant tree trunks. So I figured here's a few, you know, here's, here's one. We're going to call this one Steve. This one Fred. Something like that. Put a few in the background. Maybe just a few sticking out. It doesn't too much matter. Just get some little sticks in there. Just a few little scratches. Something we can cover up. A lot of these are going to get covered up with our highlights. So don't worry too much about it. Just get a few up there and we'll go from there. So to make our highlight color, I'm going to use this same dirty brush. This is our oval brush. This is this is going to paint most of this painting for us today. I'm going to wipe out a good bit of this green color right onto a napkin. Just just going to wipe it out. All the excess paint. So the bristles are still dark green. There's still a good bit of green in there. So I'll grab a little bit of our liquid white. Now this is just really thin white paint. This allows us to blend color right on top of the next one. So to do that I'm just gonna just go right into this yellow with my dirty brush and I'll just start getting a nice bright yellow color, yellow green color. And you can take this to Darker side, the lighter side. I'm just going to start right here in the middle and we're going to change it a bit. So I'm just loading it on full and then I'll push in. I'll just tap. Just tap, right? Just tap, 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 tap. And all I'm doing is just loading paint right to the edge of the brush. There's a teeny little ridge here and there's one just like it on my brush and that's what I'm going to paint with. So I'll start in this area here. And I'll just start tapping, picking out our individual treetops. Just little taps. I'm thinking about my tree shapes. I want them to look round, rounded and, and kind of like they're flowing with the land there. So I'll just change the flavor a little bit. I'll just add a little yellow ochre to it. Same colors, just plus a little yellow ochre. And on this one over here, I'll just give him a little bit, kind of right through here. And on the other side, we'll just keep it going. Just super easy, just filling these in, just picking out individual trees. Now we're working one tree at a time. So when I'm getting up here, I'm not just tapping at random. I'm really thinking about individual trees. So I'll work on one tree at a time. So this one here, just working one individual little shape. And we'll call him Fred. And I'll give him a friend. So I'll go into some yellow ochre, some Indian yellow, and I'll go into this red too. So that's going to make it a little brown. Uh, the green and the red together make kind of a brown color. So I'm just going to pick out my next tree here. Just individual little tree shapes. Grab some more green. Darken it up. And we're in business here. So I'll just finish these off here. Here's another one. And then one more, we'll go extra dark. He's on the side. We'll say he didn't get as much sunlight as his friends here, so he's just a little darker on this one back here on the edges. Just little taps, little gentle little taps. So that looks pretty good. Uh, we've got distinct layers of trees there sitting. We got some background trees and foreground. We've managed to pick out a few details. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our reflections in this water underneath. We need something for, these, for this little tree line to sit on. 
And to do that, I'm just going to grab a one inch brush and I'm going to go right into sap grain and our dark mixture that we used. Just right on the brush, a little more sap grain. And I'm just going to start right here. So I put this up here and just bend and you pull straight down. You just pull them straight down. These will be our reflections. You just straight down. These are about the easiest technique we have here in this, in this oil painting is making reflections. It's super easy. You just pull them straight down. We'll keep working on this side here. Not quite as much on this side. So from there, we'll blend out these little water lines and these reflections. Just a clean brush. It's cleanish. I'll wipe it out. There we go. So I'm going to start right here in the center. You just grab them, really bend the bristles, and just pull them flat. Pull them as straight flat down as you can. Straight down. Straight down. Just work quick. Straight down, straight down. And then we're going to go gently across them. And since our canvas is wet, these little water lines will move. We can create all kinds of neat little reflections. Just right through there. So we've got our reflections set there, but we can get some of our little highlight trees. We can get some of these reflected in the water too. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll just go right back into our same green color that we've been using. Just tap it in. But this time, since it's a reflection, I'm actually going to flip the brush upside down and just tap these in this way. Change the flavor one time. Just always changing the flavors, just different greens and yellows. So we figure here's one. Darken it down a bit. Here's another. And here's some. And we won't leave this side out. Just a few on this side. Just a few over here. So to blend these out, just like our water and our reflections, it just takes a really gentle touch. I'm just going to whisper across these just, just so gentle. I'm just going to pull them straight down, just straight down. I'm barely, barely touching it on this side as well. And then we'll go quietly across them, whisper quiet. We don't want to lose them. We just want them to diffuse in the water a little bit. And that's about all I'm looking for in my reflections and in my water there. So we figure now we'll just put a little water line right underneath there, something to separate it. And this is something Bob Ross did in his episodes always. He was always so good at it. He did it so fast. We'll just grab a little bit of blue, a little bit of liquid white. We'll just cut across it. Just cut across, right across with the knife. And just right up in here, I'm just going to scrub right across. Just going to act like I'm going to cut a hole right through this canvas. It's right here. Same thing, just load it up. You're not going to hurt this canvas, so you can really scrub it. Just try to cut a hole right through the canvas. There we go. Just like that, got our background set there. Everything looks pretty good. I think I'm happy with that. So, got our distant trees. We've got some little front ground trees picked out here. Let's go ahead and frame this in on the sides. 
And to do that, I'm just going to use a one inch brush. I'm just going to keep this really simple today. All I'm going to do is go back into our dark color. But to the dark color, I'm going to add a good bit of sap green right onto the brush. So I'm looking for a really dark green color. It should look almost black. And I'm loading this in one direction, just like the music. Oh, that's terrible, I'm sorry. So <laughs> I'm just pulling the brush. So I set the brush down <laughs> and I pull it. I'm really bending the bristles. I'm bending them and then they, boop, they spring off there. And I'm left with a good bit of little detail right here. So I pull it in one direction and then I flip the brush over. So one side is rounded and I'm going to paint with that round side up. We'll just start, say, about right here. Figure, well, there it is now. We got a, we, <laughs> we've got a tree up here now for sure. So all I'm going to do is just tap these in, just a good bit of dark. I've got this on my brush. I'm just going to start laying out where my little individual branches and trees are. And I'm just going to move down the tree. I'll reload a little bit and just load in one direction. Flip the brush over, and let's say right through here. We're just going to keep dropping this in. It's little taps. That's all I'm giving it, just a few taps. Throw a little more dark color in here. So I'm just going for basic tree shape right now. I'm not looking for a lot of detail. I'm not really worrying about it. I'm just letting the brush do all the work for me. So all I'm going to do is just start this tap on. Now I'm not letting the brush slide. I'm just bending the bristles, just taps, almost like a stamp. And I'm just filling in those dark areas. And then through this area down on the bottom, it's pretty dark. So I'm going to add a little black and a little Van Dyke brown to that just so we're super dark in this bottom back corner. So down here, let's say, yeah, about right there. That's where that big bush is. We'll drop him in and load a little more color. We'll throw this in here too. Getting dark onto the canvas, that's all I'm doing. I'm not looking for anything particular, just tapping in color. So you gotta have this dark to show the light. You gotta have the dark to show the light. So I'm just really grabbing all my colors. A little blue, a little black, a little brown, a little red, quite a bit of green. And I'll just keep working it. Just tapping it in, just right through here. And let's go ahead and frame in this right side too, since we've got this brush going. Just gonna grab a little bit of the black, good bit of the green, load the brush full, just get to tap in here. So I'm gonna work in little individual branches. I'm gonna say, here's a branch. And it's gonna come down. Here's another one. You can you can work these any which way. You can then say here's a branch, it comes down like this. I'm just looking for some dark. Just good and dark. That's all we need. Just a good dark color. Through here. I'm doing is tapping. That's it. Nothing to it. You can do this at home. This one we'll keep working on here. We'll just give them a little bit darker area. Just keeping it moving. Just these couple trees. Few trees. I'd say some of the trees are probably my best friends are trees. Some of my best friends are trees. That's a terrible thing to say. <laughs> So 
I'm looking here at this. I see a good bit of framing going on. There's a lot of dark in there. Um, well, let's just keep going with this. So I'm going to add some detail to these now. And I'm just going to use a little script aligner brush. This is just a tiny little, tiny little brush I'm going to use to make some details, like some sticks and stuff, some branches. So to that, I'm just going to add paint thinner, just a few drops. I'm just grabbing it right from the bucket here. Just I need a lot, a lot of paint there. Probably six, seven, eight, nine, or ten drops. This paint has got to be really thin. So I'm mixing this paint here. And it's thin. It's it's pretty much running on my canvas or on my palette here. So I'm just going to spin the bristles. Just going to turn them through the paint, and that's going to load it to a really sharp edge. And right about here, we'll say there's a tree. He runs through to here. We can darken them up a bit, no worries. It's gonna come down through here. And if your hand's wiggly, even better. Because the trees don't grow straight. So if you got a if you got a shaky, nervous hand, that's great. That'll just work perfect for you. So I'll keep these branches moving forward. We'll say there's uh, a branch that comes down and forward like this, and he hangs off like that. He's got some little sticks on there, and one up here. There's one too. Just gonna throw in a little dark. Now some of this is gonna get covered up, and that's okay because you know it's back there, and it will show through. Some of these will show through. And that's what we're looking for. People will think you worked for days trying to get these in there. Just going to darken him a bit. So I'll grab a little more paint there. Just a touch. Get this paint really flowing. Doing this here. And we'll say through this area, we've got some branches. Right through. It's kind of easy. Little branches. And there's one I see in the back here. It's kind of hanging off. I'll put his reflection in first. So there's that. <laughs> this is the tricky one. Steady hand. Right through here. Just boop. Just kind of drop them in. Perfect. Perfect. So if you've got unlimited time, you can add as many sticks and details as you want. Um, I'm going to call that good with this one. There's, there's quite a bit of little details in here. You can see them. All kinds of little sticks and stuff. So we'll call him good. So we'll keep... We'll keep going with this oval brush. This brush has been doing us so good. There's really no, no reason to change. And I'm kind of lazy. I don't really feel like washing other brushes. So I'm just going to keep using the same brush for most of this painting. So this color is pretty dark, I can see. So I don't want to lose a lot of that dark contrast on there. So I'm going to grab a little of my dark here. And then go back into my yellow. I'm looking for a really dark green color. I don't want this super bright because then you'll lose all of that dark that you put up in there. And you really don't want to lose that. that. That dark is so important. And I know it's so easy to cover it all up, but I'm just try to leave it up there. So I'm going for a pretty dark green color. And I've thinned it just a little bit with some of my trunk color. So this paint is good and thin. It'll stick right to. All I'm doing is tapping, just getting a little ridge of paint. And I'll start on this left side here. Just picking out little individual pieces. Here's some. Here's some. 
We can lighten that a little bit. Throw some of these ones in the front. Here's some. To that, we'll add some white, a little yellow, brighten it up. And just start picking out our little individuals. See a few in here. Same thing, just keep these going. Let's say these ones come out in front. There they are. There's the little branches. Same thing over here. Just kind of covering some things up, working through it. There they are. Bring him out. There he is. Looking good, looking good. Let's keep this moving here. So I see this little branch coming. I, to my eye, it's coming, looking like a claw. Hanging over this way. So <laughs> I'm just going to just drop some color right in front of him. Right on the claw here. Fred's claw, we'll call it. Right on the edge, just right here. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, it's lighting that hair. I kind of want these ones to show. So I'm just going to throw some yellow and some white into my mix. Just brighten it up a bit. Just a bit. Just a bit. And go through right here. Just drop a few things on him. Perfect. Perfect. That looks great. So I'm just working my greens. Yellows. Going back and forth between my dark and my light. I'm trying to keep this dark. This foreground stuff, you got to keep it dark. So just tapping in, tapping in. Let's start picking out some of these little individuals in the front here. I know there's a teeny bit of color on here. We'll call that one bush there. And we're gonna work on these one bush at a time. We're not just gonna we're not just gonna tap and think, you know, random, random spots. So we're we're really focusing on one individual clumps of bushes. Go back here. I'll change the flavor a good bit to some Indian yellow. Indian yellow is a bright orangish macaroni and cheese color. And this little front guy right here, I'm going to say, there he is. Start picking him out. There's our front one. And this back one back here, we'll say, comes around like this. And I'm just building layers. I'm just working in just layers, and just one after the other. And that's that's how we get depth in these paintings. Is just adding layer after layer after layer. And it's really not that hard to do. You just you just put in your darks and then you add your highlights on top of them. So we'll keep moving on the right side here now. That went on so easy, we'll just do the other side too. Grab a touch of my thinner here, a little magic white, liquid white. And we'll start picking out a few little branches. Just a few things, just to show some color up there. Just a little bit. And here's one. It comes off the back here. And and this one's going to come down out in front. And those will give us our little our little hanging down details, kind of hanging out underneath the branches. The brushes do that automatically for you. You really don't have to work that hard. You just pick out your you just pick out your spots here, just little individual branches of bushes. Nothing crazy. Just add a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow. I'm gonna bring these forward a bit, just brighten up the color. I'm just tapping, tap, 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 tap. Right here in the front, we'll say there's one that comes this way and out in front of the water. So he needs a little dark to get him to show. Out here in front of the water. There he is. Very nice. Bring him out.
I'm gonna go back into my light color here, just yellows, nothing too crazy. And I'll just tap this right here. Just little taps, little bitty taps, little taps, little taps. That's all I'm doing. So I see a little path. You got to at least have a way to get down to this water. You, a, a spot this beautiful, you really need to get down close to that water and see the wildlife. So let's just put a little path in there. And I'll show you how easy that is. So it's, I'm just going to grab a little bit of this midnight black, a little bit of this Van Dyke brown right there. I'm just going to mix them together, just black and brown, nothing crazy. Just cut a little roll of it and just pull it out flat like this. Just cut a little roll of it. And we figure right here. I'm just going to lay in a path. Just throwing in some dark so that way the highlight will show. Nothing crazy, nothing hard, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. So I've got my dark there. I need a color to go on top of it. And we're going to make probably one of my favorite colors. And that's called Christmas Brown. This is a local favorite here. We're going to take our alizarin crimson, red, and our green, red and green together. And we're just going to mix them. That's going to make a beautiful brown. I like mine a little bit to the red side, so now we get red. And a little bit more red to it, I mean. So I mix that good, and to that, I'll add just a little white. Just pull it through a few times until we get a nice marbled, nice marbled color. Just something like that. Cut across. And right through here, check this out, right here. I'm just going to brush across it, super gentle, super gentle. Just whisper. The canvas is going to grab what it wants. And already, we've got a great looking little path just kind of sitting there. And we really didn't have to do anything to it. But mix up two colors and just throw it on there. That was super easy. So let's give it something to set it in there now. And this I think is probably the fun part. So we're just going to grab a little bit of this white, liquid white. Go right into our yellow. And our dark colors. Keep this kind of dark. And right across the front of this, right across the feet of these, I can just... Start putting in little bushes and things. And I can just start picking these little things out. All the little individuals. Add a little blue to this color, it'll cool it down, give you a nice shadow blue color. And right through here, I'll say, here's a bush. It's just kind of sitting there. And throw the last one. We'll just push something in right here. Just to kind of frame it in. And then we'll just keep going here. Same thing, same old colors, dark greens. Something like that. So once we get all these in here, we can go back and we can start scratching in a couple little sticks and things. Um, you know, we can we can start giving these bushes little sticks to hold them up. You know, here's one. So here's here's some. These are just little little things that just add to the painting. These little these little details just add to your painting. And 
like the knife. So we've got a little dark spot here. We can we can add a few more sticks and stuff to this. We can keep the detail going on this. So what we'll do, we'll just get crazy as Bob would say. We'll just get a little crazy. I know you guys have been waiting for me to get crazy. So I'll go into paint thinner and I'm just mixing up. I'm just putting drops of paint thinner on my palette here. Just looking for really runny paint, really runny. That's the trick. So to get these to flow, they've got to have a lot of thinner to them. It's got to be really thin paint. So this paint's pretty much running off my palette. It's like ink. And it's dark. So I'll turn the brush through it a few times like this. Turn the brush. Pull it out flat. And through here, we'll say... Throw in some sticks. A few more. Just to kind of pick stuff out. This will help give the painting depth and dimension and all kinds of things. People will think you worked for days putting these in, but shh, don't don't tell them how easy this is. I'll be out of a job. So just some sticks. I'll just take some liberties and throw some sticks in. There's no right way or wrong way to do it. Here's some. Here's some. There's some. And so we've really only used a dark color for our sticks. But you can use a lighter color too. You can go right into your lighter browns with a mix of white too. And those will help bring out some contrast and some depth. So I'll just mix that up quick. Just a little brown, a little white, a little brown, a little white. Kind of a light color. Good and thin. It's not quite thin enough. You just add thinner to it until it's like ink. Just like ink. And now you can Come back through and add a couple sticks in the foreground if they're bright enough for you. There we go. Do this. Oh, yeah, that looks very nice. That's a good one there. Good little stick. So, these, so the techniques in, in, and the materials I'm using, uh, these are Bob Ross brand materials and paint brushes. This is a specific type of, of oil paint. It's, it's not like your standard oil paint. This stuff is thick, really. It's a really thick paint. And that's the trick with this is being able to layer paint is, is starting with a really thick base coat and then progressively thinning it as we move forward into our highlights. So. Go, Bob Ross's golden rule was a, a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. So I'm thinning this paint down so it will flow right over my background colors. And I'll put one stick, let's say he comes through here. Now he's a delicate little stick. He's shy. He's kind of shy. One more. One more. And one through here. Give me some color. Uh, I said one more, but I keep going. <laughs> That's the thing about painting. You never know when to stop. It feels good and it's hard to stop. So to here, uh, I've pretty much got a done complete painting, but I just see one little spot where there's a little bit of sunshine just kind of shining right through there. And I'd like to put that in. I'd like to I'd like to see that in here. And I'm just gonna grab I'll keep using the same oval brush. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe out all of the dark color. Now I'm just wiping this on a standard standard old paper towel off camera. We'll call them off off screen paper towel. We'll just wipe them here and 
my brush is, is good and cleaned out. So I'll grab a touch more of my liquid white. And I'll tap that into the bristles. And it's turning green right away. It's turning a really light green color. So I'm just going to, I've got a ton of this white in my bristles already. I don't need much paint, so I'm just really going to just just a little swipe of that yellow, just teeny bit. And I'm going to tap down here in a little spot. And I'll grab a little bit of the yellow ochre and some blue. Ooh, that's a pretty green. That's a pretty green. A little more blue. Just a touch. I want to cool it down. Cool it down. You add the blue to cool it down. So I've got a pretty, pretty thin paint here. This is very thin. And I'm just going to go right here over the top of the path. Check this out. I'm just, I'm just going to go a couple spots right here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And then one more, we'll say it goes right here. And so he's just going to sit there. Just You can see the light's kind of shining through from there. Just a couple of these branches here. Just going to pick out some of the light. Now this is super, be sparing with this highlight, this highlight color. Because this stuff, it, it, gets, it gets to working and it gets to feeling good. And, and before you know it, you've covered up your whole canvas with nothing but just this bright stuff. So just a touch, you know, right along the, say a little right there along the tops. Maybe a little right there, just poking through. Anywhere you think the sunlight would just, would just be shining right through there. We'll figure, here's one. And last one, we'll say goes like this. Change the flavor, just going to add cad yellow to it. And super light touch across these just to sparkle them. And these are really delicate, just barely, barely touching, barely touching the canvas. I'm not looking for a lot, just enough so it looks like the sun is shining right through those trees. It's really pretty. And I would say with this, we've pretty much got about a, a completed painting here. I, I, I don't think, you know, there's much more we could do to this. So we'll just throw in a little color up here and there. And I would say this is about a done painting. Um, from here, you know, let's go ahead and we'll put down our palette here. And this is the moment of truth, the reveal. This is this is always the fun part here. So I'm just going to go ahead and peel off my tape. Technical tape difficulties. Oh, there it goes. Very nice, very nice. See, we're left with a nice little border. Everything looks good. I would say about the only thing we have left to do is probably going to be to sign this painting, which I kind of forgot. So I'm just going to mix up a little bit of blue and a little bit of white. I'm going to thin this down pretty thin. Just stay a little blue and white. Looking for a really cool blue color. Grab a touch more thinner here. And down here, let's say, actually, let's say about right here. We'll just sign it. There it is. Your very own masterpiece. Now you can paint any of these pictures. What I like to do is I like to go to state parks, I like to go on hikes, and I like to take pictures of beautiful places so that way I can remember them and I can paint them when I get home. Um, and then sometimes I also like to take my paint stuff out to the state parks and paint 
in nature and that's a lot of fun too but um so that's it that's how that's how you paint a picture in the bob ross wet on wet style um if you're interested in learning how to paint this awesome technique you can reach out to me i'm in the harrisburg pennsylvania area i offer private lessons and group lessons it's a fantastic method it's brought me a lot of joy and i, I hope this kind of thing brings you joy brings you joy too Thank you so much, Justin. I, I don't know about everyone else, but that has to be the most soothing, relaxing experience I've had in weeks. Just watching you create that in 50 minutes. Wow. Wow. Um, most, of the, <laughs> most of the comments we got were words of accolades, um, but we did get a question in there um, about your brushes. Are all oil brushes stiff bristled? Well, they're... They're natural hair bristles is what they are. So they're, they're natural boar's hair. They're not, they're kind of stiff. Um, the only ones that are stiff are going to be your, your fan brushes. Um, oh, excuse me. And, and these are, these are pretty stiff. These, these brushes here particularly, um, those are stiff, but these other ones, they're, they're not very stiff at all. They're just big. And they're kind of they are intimidating, but they're really not hard to use. You can create some really delicate stuff with these with these big brushes, and you just clean them with oil, uh, or excuse me, you clean them with um, odorless paint thinner. Never put them in water because since they're hair, they'll just like a bad frizzy hair day. I'm sure, I'm sure you all know about that. I've, I've had bad hair days. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. We have another question. <laughs> your brushes um you only use two for this painting is that your regular right. style or is that just is just happenstance with this particular piece with this piece um the beautiful thing about the bob ross technique is there's more than one way to do things you can you can pretty much use any brush to do do just about anything you're not limited to you know one particular thing i like to keep it simple when i'm painting um, if I'm teaching painting, I like to keep it really simple. We'll use one, two, two brushes and a palette knife. Um, there's really no need to complicate it. Great. Wonderful. Well, thank you again so much, Justin. This has been just, oh gosh, bomb for the soul. How I'm going to watch this over and over again. <laughs> and you can too. It'll be on our Facebook and YouTube uh, pages pretty much from here on out. Let's just remind folks um, how they can get in contact with you. Is Facebook the best way? You have Painting with Justin on Facebook, mm -hmm. platform, correct? Yeah, Facebook.com slash Painting with Justin um, on Instagram at Painting with Justin. And I can be reached email, JustinHoyleArt at gmail.com as well. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you again, Justin, for sharing your time and talents with us. This was just, just the best treat. Of course. It was a lot of fun. Thank you everyone for watching. If you're interested like this, if you want to do stuff like this, reach out to me. I'm always around. I'm always available to teach. And or if you just want to watch, that'd be cool too. Awesome. Thank you so much, Justin. Of course. Bye. Bye everyone.